Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and before we get into what we have planned for today I would like to do like a quick reintroduction. My name is Adif Evan Great and this is my channel. So what I do mostly is to try to create a complete project, try to see how we can experiment with how real life projects actually work. So compared to just teaching ourselves different kinds of uh, programming language, we actually want to see how all this combines together to give the whole system we have. At the moment, we are currently experimenting with a fintech project. And if you are new here, then I will say welcome on board and let's see how far we can impact on ourselves. So yeah, that's my reintroduction and let's get back to our business. So yeah, before we actually get back to that, just to kind of ramp up our brain as to where we are. So let me pull up my browser to see where we are actually. Okay, so at the moment, uh, our backend is still down. So let's start that first. All right, so it's up and running. And let's go back to our front end to verify this. So also, I've zoomed in a little bit so that it becomes very legible and we can see what is going on. So here I'm ready to sign in again. Again, we've not implemented Remember Me, so that's just random for now. And this is where we have. So we have been able to add accounts, show the account number, and we were preparing to send money the other time. So here, the expectation is that you'll be able to enter your account number and once you specify the 10 digits, it will try to verify if the account number indeed exists, more like an account resolution. So this is where we are going to continue from. So just to break down what we are trying to achieve, here we are going to keep typing our account number, and as soon as it gets to 10, we are going to lose focus on the input field, and there will be like a loading sign showing us that it's trying to resolve the account number. Then that means on the back end, we should have an endpoint that can actually perform that action. So, yeah, I think on that note, we would have to go to the back end to implement that. Then we can come back to the front end to actually see if it works. So back on our back end, we are going to add a new query because at the moment, we don't have a query to resolve our account number. And also, here are the endpoints we have so far. We have the one to get the accounts, user accounts. We have the one to perform transfer. We have the one to perform add money. So now we want to add a new one to resolve accounts. But yeah, like I said, we are going to start with the queries. So here we are going to make a query to find an account where the account number is what we specified. And another thing we have to introduce here is after we've resolved that account, we are going to show the customer's name. So just to verify what we have, do we have the information of the user. So let's take a look. So we can specify the username, as you can see. I don't think there is any specific information about a user. All we have for a user is just the username. So maybe in the future, we can talk about KYC, where we can add uh, more data about user. Then we can introduce maybe the first name and last name and so on. But for now, the only information we have about a user is the email. And we are going to need it anyways because we need that to show to the user that this account has indeed been resolved. Okay, so coming back into our queries. So here we are going to add the query to get the account. However, we want to join our user table on the user ID. Okay, so that way we are able to access the email from the user table. All right, let's write our query. And the first thing we need to do is to specify the name, which would be more like selecting a single. So this should be single account because the account ID is unique, so we're expecting one. So again, I need to remind you that I'm using Copilot, so it kind of understands what we are trying to do. So as a result of that, it's going to make our work faster. So here we're going to select star, then comma user.email from accounts join join users on accounts.userid equals to user users.id. So on this note, 
based on the fact that our users is actually users so here we're going to be getting users so it has to match with what we have here and also we need to verify that it's actually the name we gave to the user setup so yeah it's users so we need to verify all those so we have the joint here now so if that means we are going to get every information about the account and we are going to get the user's email from the account. Then we have to join it on the user's on the account user ID based on the user's ID where the account number is equivalent to $1 because we're going to be passing this as a parameter. So we can format this to make it cleaner. So we can have this come down here. Then from accounts, we can have the join aspect come down here. Then we can have the where come down here. And we can save everything. So, yeah, I don't think we have any issue. So let's run uh, make SQLC. So let's kind of stop this server for now. So we have clear. So make SQLC. So... As you can see, running this, we didn't have any error, which means our query here was done successfully. So let's verify what we have now. So if we come down to SQLC, we should see the query to get the account um, information based on account number. So here's the query, get account by account ID. So as you can see, it actually scanned the whole entity for the users. However, all that we need here is the email. So it looks like we are still missing something. It looks like we did something wrong. Because based on this, is getting all the information from the users. We don't want that. So coming back to our queries, and yeah, I can see the culprit already. So the star actually signifies everything. So we have to specify what star we are actually getting. And in this case, it's going to be the account.star. So this is going to make it specific to everything within the accounts while we're only getting the email from the user. And that's what we want. So let's make SPLC again. And again, there is no error. So let's verify what we have this time around. And this is better. So now we are getting every information about the account. However, we are getting the email for the user. Now we can come back to our account API and now we want to create the endpoint to kind of resolve our account number. So here we're going to have a function that we are going to attach to the account struct. So get account by account number. So in here we can define a variable for our account number and this is going to be of var acc num of type string. Then we are going to try to bind the request we are getting to this account number. So we are trying to bind the body to this. So we can have error into. So thinking about this, we've actually done this in the past. And if I could recall, we have a method we've defined to kind of help us validate this error. So if we come back to the auth, I will take a look at this. We have an e viewer, something like this. So according to this, it takes in a type. And according to the validator itself, it takes in an interface. And an interface in Go kind of means we can send in anything. So I'll copy this whole part and we're going to reuse it. So I'll just remove this entirely. And here it means we can do something like string. So we are saying we are expecting a string for the account num. And here we're going to bind whatever we have within our JSON, more like the body, to the account number, like this. But thinking about it now, I think we might actually need to kind of create a struct to it. That way we can specify the information we are missing. So for instance, if we did not set the account number, we don't know what name to report as an error. So on that note, we are going to create a struct. So we have this as account. Um, let's look for a name that match the function. Um, get account by account number requests, kind of. Okay, let's draw this. Get account by num 
requests struct and here we can now specify the account number which is real yeah so obviously i forgot we totally have to define a bind um, rule so we are binding this rule, meaning we are saying this particular field is compulsory. You have to provide it. So yeah, we indeed needed to create this as a struct rather than the string we specified earlier. So now we can say var info, just call it info, and we can specify the request we just created. And now this has to be what we are sending. So this way, if we did not provide the account number, then it's going to tell us, okay, an error call because you didn't provide your account number, something like that. So that's what this is handling here. So what we need to bind this to is our info. Like that. So now we can get our account, ACC, comma, error, into server. So we have that information, a.server.queries, get account by account number. So we have this. So info dot account number. So here we can check if error is not new, then we return the issue with that. So yeah, this is not an internal server error. I think we've also handled this better in the past. Let's see. Okay, so I don't think we have any special thing to handle that. All we did was just do this. So I'll copy what we have from here and I'll paste here. Okay. So if error indeed exists, then we want to return that error. Else, if error does not exist, then we want to return the account. And now we want to return our account again. And remember, there is a special situation where the account number is funny. So for this, we might not care about that because we really don't need the account. Or better still, we can have the email specified here as well. Then that means the type we are sending in is not going to be an account again because here is not really an account, but let's take a look. So the type this is returning is get account by account number row. And the only difference between this and an account is just the email. So yeah, I think a little bit of stuff there. So for our format, we can decide to use generics to kind of define what gets sent here. And in a case where the generates indicates that we are sending, let's, veri let's verify once again, now here, here. So in the case the generic indicates we are sending this, then we can kind of get the email. And I think that's too complex if you ask me. What if we now decide to send more information in the future? Yep. So instead, let's define a new kind of struct for it. But the benefit here now is that we can extend the account response we have initially. So let's have another type. So type account by non response struct. So we can first add the account response to it. Now we can add the email to it. And that makes more sense. So here we can define a function to do that. So here we have the function to account response to account non response and db. So this has been specified to us because that's literally what we want. So also we can spread that information just like this. And we are good to go. So now we can come back to the account API and return our response. So we have C dot json http status okay so the new struct we just created then we convert it to the format we want then we return it so we have an issue yeah we don't specify c which is funny so this should be c start gene contests okay so what are we still missing info dot get account number yeah, we're not returning anything here, so let's remove this. So info dot account number is returning an error. Let's see. Okay, so the expectation for this is a null type, so we have to make it a null type. So SQL null string. So we are going to have SQL null string. Then we can have this. Oh, okay. I think I see something. Yep. So this is a pointer, and as a result of that. 
we have to make this like this. Yeah, so it's convenient that we've not used this. So let's register the opt. So hint here, we're going to have a um, server group the post get account by account number, then we use this. I think that's all we need to do. So before we actually run it up here, because I think I've kind of spent some time, we can validate this by making a request to the to this endpoint. So first thing first, let's start the server. So make start. Then I'll try to get postman. So this is running on port 8001. So let's get postman to test our endpoints. So just so we don't forget, if we come back up, the endpoint is to get account by account number. And this is towards account itself. So here I have accounts and I can add new endpoints. So better still, let me just duplicate this. So let me rename this get account by account number. So now this is going to be let's verify get dash account by number. Then if we make this request without specifying anybody, let's swap. So unauthorized requests, we have to be authorized before we make this request. So let's try to log in with my email. So here we have it. And here I'm going to kind of just come back here. So I could set a token for that, but let me just use this. Okay. So now let's make the request again. So provide a body. Yep. I think that's the first thing we need to do. And this is going to be raw JSON. And here we can just have random stuff for now. Random. So we get to see how our validator will kick in. So as you can see, account number is what we require. So let's specify an account number. And let's see, just random, let's see what happens. Okay, so SQL no rule here. So we don't have a result for that account number. So we can come back to our front end to get one of the account numbers. So it looks like we are locked out. Okay, we are here. So let's copy this. Let's come back to Postman. Let's post this account number. And yeah, we get the accounts, which makes sense. So that's more or less the resolution. So we are going to round up here today, just so that we can kind of study what we have here while we prepare for the next one. So we've handled the back end. And in the next episode, we are going to be incorporating it into our front end to complete that whole flow. So guys, that is all in terms of what we have in this episode. And now let's discuss about this channel. Let's try to move the channel up. So yeah, I think you can all agree with me that the quality of the video so far has been great. And this is me trying to ensure that it's quality over quantity, okay? So yeah, let's show some support by subscribing if you've not. And maybe in the next episode, I'll probably show us a shot of how we go through the website. Because I found out that literally more than 80% of us check through the videos without really subscribing. So again, if you have any reservation in regards to how the channel is being run or the kind of content that have been shown up then you can drop your comments let's engage and actually move it to a better place so yeah that's what i thought i should share with you bye and see you in the next episode